Today we are gonna go over the Goggles N3. Take a look at some of these specs, put them on, try them out. Fly some. Should We're fly. even gonna fly? We're even gonna fly. Oh, come on now. These are cool. Ooh, interesting. Oh, interesting. First reaction, they look bigger. They're bigger. A lot bigger. Mm -hmm bulky compared to the other ones. Quite a bit bigger. Makes me wonder if they're gonna fall off the face or be heavier. Weight wise, weight wise, they're really similar. I'm surprised at how light these are. Do you feel a little bit lighter maybe? It's not It's not heavy. The, the headset in itself is not heavy. I feel like these are still pretty light. So let's talk about the quality of these goggles. We've got a 1080 display inside these goggles. How does that image look? A whole lot better than analog. Yeah, okay. Oh, yeah. And uh, up to 60 frames per second. Do mm -hmm. you get a reading? Can you see what frames you're getting right now? Um, I don't actually. I can see that we're, we're at 32 megabit per second, which is pretty good, so. That is good. You, you expect good image quality. You don't expect, you know, drop frames or latency or anything like that. And I, I'm sure there's latency in this, but it's certainly not anything terrible where it's unflyable. Now, what's interesting to me on this is these goggles don't seem to be like an upgrade over the Goggles 3, in my opinion. They kind of seem like they're, they're a lower entry point. They're a, a cheaper version of the Goggles 3, right? Yep, and I think that's exactly what they are. They're a lower barrier to entry. I, I wouldn't be surprised if come Black Friday, we see these goggles paired with the Neo and, you know, a motion controller. I, I think that they're gonna be cheap. They're gonna be accessible. Those two things are what DJI does really well. Now, one thing that's a little bit different with the, the field of view on these goggles, the image is actually bigger. It's a 54 degree mm -hmm. field of view where on the goggles three, what is it, 45, I think? Yes, I believe it's 45 as mm -hmm. well. It makes sense. We're, we're, we're looking at one screen here instead of two. Right. So. And this is an LCD screen. The, yes. the goggles three are two D. OLED screens. Yeah. yeah. The image, I mean, it looks very much the same. Image quality is really nice. The colors are a little bit different, not as vibrant ever so slight decrease in quality. Feel like the resolution is pretty comparable. The image looks good. Not bad, I think image quality is good. Brightness looks pretty good. Sharpness is definitely sharp. It's nice and clear. It's actually probably a little easier because the other one I had to close one eye at a time just to adjust the diopters to make sure that each one was clear and nice. I wish I could adjust the, the, the depth between the eyes to have a bit of a sharper image in the corners. And and it's interesting that the screen almost looks a little bit warped. You know what I mean by that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, not not horrible like, no. like a, a fisheye camera, but a slight, slight warping. And they say that that could help with uh, folks who might get motion sickness while flying FPV as well. Wow, that is almost making me sick as soon as I put them on. It would actually be better for me if it was, if it sat up like, like this. The, the curve on the screen is kind of throwing me off. There is a little bit of a warp. Concave, I guess. It's almost like a fisheye lens. But it's not really bothering me. Can you move the drone a little bit? I don't feel motion sick when the drone is moving, so that's a good thing. Also, like the Goggles 3, the Goggles N3 also have 60 megabytes per second and are on the 04 system, right? Yes. Now, right now, we're only getting 32 uh -huh. because we're flying the Neo. So when we switch over to the Avada, we should be able to see pretty close to that 60. Well, I, you know what? I think it's time, Jason. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, and when we switch, I mean, like maybe I should fly. Maybe you should fly? Maybe. Okay. We'll think about it. We'll think about it. Okay. Uh, now, another difference with the N3 goggles over the goggles 3 is a feature that I like from both of them where you're able to live feed to a phone. Now with the goggles 3, we could do that wirelessly, right, Jason? Yes. The goggles 3 will do it wirelessly or wired. The N3 goggles, unfortunately, you do have to use a C to C cable. Yeah, and I mean, that's that's fine, really. Get a six or an eight foot C to C cable and you're good. Yeah, now the image quality on the Avada 2 is better than the Neo. Absolutely, right? yeah, they're different drones designed for different things, right? Absolutely, so how does that translate to the video transmission in the goggles? Now, I, you know, I think that the bit rate's gonna be a little bit higher mm -hmm. because the uh, mm -hmm. Avada 2 is a bigger drone, it's gonna have a better, you know, video transmitter. Uh, but otherwise, I mean, you're still getting 1080p60, so it's it's still great, and you know, it's it's much better than we've seen out of a lot of other aircraft. It's better than analog. I I've flown right. the Walk Snail, so you know, it's very comparable to that system. Um, mm -hmm. I think it's personally more latent than like Shark Bite or something like that. You're getting into better quality with more latency, so it's a trade-off, right? And with that latency, it is still pretty low. That latency, very low. Yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, at 31, 31 milliseconds? 31, yeah, minimum yeah. of 31, right? So it's gonna fluctuate above that. Ah, okay. But when we talk about analog, we're talking about seven milliseconds, nine uh -huh. milliseconds. So, yeah. you know, we're still seeing quite a bit more than an analog system for, mm -hmm. for like racers use, but I think that's okay. You're getting 1080p 60. That's, that's really good. We've talked about image quality. There's one other really important feature that I think folks really care about, and that is the style. How good these bad boys look on your forehead when you have them up there. Fantastic. Right? And of course, I'm just kidding. The other big <laughs> factor that I think really appeals to a lot of folks is comfort level, comfort. right? Comfort, yeah, definitely. How does it feel? Is there a red mark on your forehead? Let's see. See? Uh, yeah. Yeah, probably. Let's, let's get a really good close up of that right on Jason's forehead there. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's actually not too bad. You weren't wearing those for too long. No, no. I'm a huge fan of the hard hat style. Yeah, these feel great. I could totally fly with these. I kind of thought I'd be like tilting forward a little bit, fighting it, but it's actually pretty comfortable. Yeah, they're actually pretty comfortable. They sit a little bit on the bridge of my nose. Fit pretty comfortably. I don't feel it pushing on the glasses or crunching them. Uh, these feel good. Resting on my nose rather than actually being held up by the strap, which isn't optimal, but it's not as, not as bad as the goggles too or the other ones were. But the forehead adjustment like we had on this, not prevalent on these. A little bit more pressure up here on the bridge of my nose. I can feel it sagging a little bit in the back here. I mean, I would have to wear them for, you know, a full battery to see what it feels like. Don't love how they feel on my face, but they're much more comfortable than some other alternatives. Now, you discovered the foam padding is actually uh, removable. Removable, yep. So we might see uh, some other foam padding mm -hmm. or some, some different I accessories. Hope so. yeah. I hope so, because you know, I would probably buy these if I could get foam padding that made it feel just right. Yeah. You know, yeah. the goggles three to me feel just right. Coming coming from what I have at home, which is Fat Shark HDOs. One other difference to these, uh, when it comes to the form factor, the goggles three have those little diopters, right? Where you can adjust yep. for uh, people that wear glasses. Yes. These, you Don't. can continue to wear your glasses. Yes. Since I've worn others with glasses on before that have not been very comfortable. I'm curious. Actually not too bad to get them on with the glasses, just had to get them loose enough to make sure they fit around. Potentially, I could even wear these while I'm wearing sunglasses. It's kind of dark, but I can still see. Do you wear your sunglasses at night is the question. Oh, you know I do, because I'm cool like that. Looking at you while I have these on right now, uh, we don't have picture in picture. No, we do not. Uh, goggles three, I used to be able to tap right here. I don't have that with these goggles, unfortunately, so I can't see your beautiful face right now. You know? Is it overheating yet? All right, let me see. <laughs> it is indeed. <laughs> No, it's not. It's not really. <laughs> what kind of battery life can we get out of these goggles? Uh, these goggles are advertised at 2.7 hours. So I would I would realistically say probably two and a half. Yeah. You know, g give yourself a buffer, right? You don't mm -hmm. want to be up and flying when the battery dies. Compared to the goggles three, what the battery life on the goggles three was three hours, I believe. Yes. So this is a little bit less, but still pretty, pretty comparable. It's very comparable. Yeah. You know, you're going to run out of batteries much quicker than that. If you're going to fly for that long, you need what? Nine sets of Avada 2 batteries? I was going to say. 10 sets. Uh, you know what? Something else we can do inside of these goggles is that easy acro mode. We can do yep. some tricks, right? But not with this guy. Not with that guy. We've got to have the motion controller. So on the ground here, we've got a couple of cool things. We can use the cursor here to actually see all of our different settings. And you can just scroll through these guys like you normally would without actually ever touching the goggles. What? Right, with the motion controller. But there's also a button you can control with the goggles themselves, right, Jason? Right, yeah. So you've got a button up here so we can do all of the same stuff even while we're flying. But what I really think folks are gonna be interested in is this easy acro mode. So to select one of those, we've got a dial here on the side of the motion controller, mm -hmm. and we can scroll through. So I'm gonna climb here because when you try new stuff, you always wanna be two mistakes high. Huh. And then you're gonna use the, the D-pad, if you will, on top, the 5D button, I believe it is. Okay. Um, and you're gonna push forward, and it's gonna do a power loop. Wow. Well, that was pretty nice. Yeah, it's pretty cool. You can uh, incorporate that in while you're flying. Let's do a flip. Now a flip you can do in two different directions. Yeah. So we did that with the goggles three. I do like that. It's it's pretty easy, yeah, it's, intuitive, fun. It, you know, it's fun for somebody who's just getting into FPV. The, the motion control is really fantastic. Something else that really might help you make your decision on what pair of goggles you're gonna get is the price. Goggles three come in at $499. Jason, what do these retail for? These guys are currently retailing for $229 cheaper than the goggles three and that might be that might be the determining factor for a lot of folks out yes. there so it's kind of more of an entry level with these goggles with the price point i could see lots of people opting in to get these goggles and they handle just just 
Right. About, about as good as the goggles about three. About as good as the goggles three. You know, as far as pricing, this is definitely more affordable than what you would find anywhere else. So why not? Why not go with this if you're getting started? This is a, a, a good way to get into it. And then eventually, if you want something lighter, this is a bit more, I think, immersive. Uh, that's also why they're more expensive. There's a bit more hardware that goes into it. So. Um, but yeah, I would still pick this, obviously, if, if money was no object. It'll be interesting to see what other compatibility comes with this. I think that's going to be a determining thing for a oh, yeah. lot of other folks, too. You know, mm -hmm. that air unit compatibility is huge for me. The air unit is your video transmitter for a home-built FPV drone. I like to build my own drones, and these could be a very, very good contender for a third of the price that I paid for my Fat Sharks way back when. These will not be mine unless there is that air, air unit compatibility. Those are the features that I think will help you make your decision. The price, the comfort level, and the image quality. Other than that, what do you think, Jason? I think that's exactly right. If these uh, seem appealing to you, get them, try them out. If they don't, that's okay too. All good, sounds good.